So we know that civilizations, they destroy themselves from within. And we know that this process, it culminates during the phase of decadence. But to truly understand this dynamic in our current cultural context, we need to recognize specific elements which are quickly leading to our collapse. Yeah, civilizational collapse is complex, and there's a lot of contributing factors. Yeah. On top of the decay of morality, a few other notable factors we need to discuss are the return to tribalism and the rise mm -hmm. of the welfare state. Yeah. In America's decadence, those are taking shape in the form of critical race theory, cultural Marxism, and socialism. Yeah, okay, so there's a lot we could talk about right there. We could spend hours discussing all the various fruit, but let's again go to the root. To do that, we need to look back nearly 100 years ago to the German Weimar Republic between World War I and World War II. It's here we find the Frankfurt School, which believed in the goals of Marxism, but realized the tactics had failed. So rather than abandon the ideology, they adjusted it. Right. Traditional Marxism attempted to bring about a violent revolution to overthrow capitalism and Christianity by pitting the poor against yeah. the rich. By creating a narrative of the oppressed and the oppressors, German philosopher Karl Marx believed class warfare mm. could be incited, and through mob justice, the system would be burned down, yeah. and a utopian socialist state could be built from the ashes. <laughs> yeah, but it didn't work. Economics alone wasn't a strong enough motivator to bring about this violent revolution, so the Frankfurt School turned to the idea of cultural Marxism. Yeah. The end goal was still the same, but the mechanism shifted from socioeconomic groups to racial groups. They thought that by pitting the different races in society against one another, tribalism could succeed where pure economics had failed and the despicable means of their glorified ends would eventually prevail. Yeah, but in 1933, the Nazi party came to power. That's so the right. Frankfurt School fled Germany and yeah. found safe harbor in America at Columbia University. Mm -hmm. It was from there that this neo-Marxism in the form of cultural Marxism, critical theory and critical race theory, then took hold in America and academia. Yeah. It took decades, but what was dubbed the long march through the institutions eventually yeah. paid off. Yeah. So this tactic is called ideological subversion, mm -hmm. where activist scholarship creates such a barrage of published disinformation that it changes the perception of reality. The foundation of this subversion was well laid by the time decadence hit America. But it was really only in this season which critical race theory and cultural Marxism stepped outside of American academia and into the mainstream, primarily through an organization called Black Lives Matter. Yeah. BLM was founded in July of 2013 by three individuals who professed to be trained Marxist. Yeah. So their goal isn't racial harmony, but rather racial enmity, using yeah. cultural Marxism to construct a narrative of oppressed versus oppressors in order to incite a violent revolution to overthrow capitalism and create a socialist state. Yeah, and <laughs> it's not even subtle. Alicia Garza, one of the co-founders of BLM, said... It's not possible for a world to emerge where black lives matter if it's under capitalism. And it's not possible to abolish capitalism without a struggle against national oppression. This is textbook Marxist language. Yeah, but of course it's in this season that yeah. America would succumb to Marxism yeah, exactly. because it ticks all the boxes characteristic of this stage of civilization. Yeah. Again, some of the hallmarks of decadence are the decay of traditional morality, a breakdown of unifying customs, yeah. and return to tribalism, and the rise of the welfare state. Yeah. These are all ideas championed by cultural Marxism. Mm. It's an ideology seemingly tailor-made for decadence. And what's interesting is that BLM also actively promotes the socially destructive practices, which Unwin and Polly have warned about. They denounce the nuclear family as a construct of white culture, promote the LGBTQ plus agenda, and even denounce mothers as primary caregivers as a product of the patriarchy. They are demonizing and subverting foundational practices of civilization. Yeah, but Black Lives Matter is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Cultural Marxism and critical race theory have completely overrun academia for decades. Yeah. As a result, our teachers and students have been increasingly indoctrinated into this ideology, and every year support for socialism and communism goes up in yeah. America. Recent polls show a full 70% of millennials would support socialism, and 36% view communism favorably. Wow. And while our 
culture is busy being mesmerized by authors like Robin DiAngelo and Abram X. Kendi, whose populist books introduce critical race theory to the masses, our society slides further towards collapse. Thankfully, there are scholars and academics out there pointing out the unfalsifiable mythologies espoused by critical race theorists. James Lindsay, Helen Pluckrose, and Christopher Rufo are just a few notable names in this arena. Yeah, and these narratives are just mythologies. They lack any kind of scientific rigor or data. In fact, critical race theory claims that logic, reason, science, empirical evidence, and exegesis are all constructs of white culture, and as such are called tools of the master, which are used to suppress the subjective truths of other races. So now not only is our society losing its rationality as unwind-warned, now we're actually denouncing rationality as being racist. (laughs) Now, that isn't to say that actual racism doesn't exist. Yeah. It absolutely does. But Marxist ideologies intent on the destruction of society obviously aren't going to solve this issue. Their tactics actually make it demonstrably worse. If we truly want to see racial reconciliation, there are some basic Judeo-Christian principles which can effectively be employed here, such as objective truth, intrinsic human value, repentance, forgiveness and higher and unifying allegiances and identity. Yeah. Unfortunately, our society has largely rejected those principles at this point. And even the church in America is straying from sound theology in favor of the social flavor of the day. Yeah. As we follow the predictable pattern of the weakening of religion during decadence, though, we don't actually become less religious. We simply substitute secular religions for traditional ones. Exactly. Yeah. You can take man out of religion, but you can't take religion out of man. Naturally, government often becomes God in this scenario, and the state becomes the church. And that was even Marx's stated goal, for the state to replace both the church and the family unit. As the author and former Soviet spy Whitaker Chambers once wrote, it is not new. It is in fact man's second oldest faith. The communist vision is the vision of man without God. Even Chambers recognized that this goes back to the original temptation of man, that we can reject God and absolute truth and determine morality and relative truths for ourselves. Yeah, and while most who support Black Lives Matter and read activist books like White Fragility and How to Be an Anti-Racist think these ideas will somehow heal America, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Yeah. Critical race theory is actively and rapidly contributing to our collapse, which again is the actual goal of this Marxist ideology. However, contrary to their belief, a socialist utopia isn't on the other side of our societal suicide. World War III is. Hey, I'm Josh. I'm Joshua. Thanks for watching the sixth installment of this discussion concerning ideological contributions to our coming collapse. Join us in the next segment as we cover the geopolitical cycle and the coming world war.